Hey guys, welcome back to Atari 50, the anniversary celebration, complete talk through and gameplay. This is part eight. Uh, this episode, we're going to be looking at, wrong way, the dawn of PCs. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, I just wanted to say, I hope you guys had a great uh, Christmas and um, I certainly did. I went home to see my family. It was an amazing time. Uh, so hope you guys got to do the same. So, uh, looking here at the dawn of PCs, excited about this since I'm a big Atari PC lover. I have many of their APIC computers now. Um, so let's get started. Uh, maybe you'll see why I love it so much after this. The dawn of PCs. I've only explored 10% of this so far. So a lot of new stuff to go through. For many, the word Atari meant not just games, but their first home computer even if its main use was to play games. So let's go ahead and take a look here. The computer generation, 1979. Starting in the 1970s, the personal computer began to carve out its own place in the family home. And for millions of first time computer owners, the name on the box was a familiar one, Atari. Atari gets personal. In November 1979, Atari entered the burgeoning uh, personal computer market with a pair of 8-bit machines, dubbed the Atari 400 and the Atari 800. At $499.99, about $2,000 in 2022, wow, and $999.99, about $4,000, these were considered to be low-cost machines. One key selling point was that they could be connected to a standard television, not an expensive monitor. Crazy how that's considered low cost, right? So uh, let's hide these captions here. And a uh, cool picture. Love that. Very neat. I, I look like that kid there back then. So moving on here. Computers at home. In the 1960s, the phrase home computer would have been considered science fiction, but as microprocessor technology rocketed forward in the 1970s, Atari was able to create low-priced machines that connected to televisions. Suddenly, the dream of the home computer was a reality. Whoops. Make sure I did that right. This thing's very sensitive. Uh, Atari 400. The 499 Atari 400 computer's defining feature was its monopanel membrane keyboard, which was lower cost and could better survive a drink being dropped on top of it, but otherwise made typing a laborious chore. Its low price, though, garnered it twice as many sales as the 800. Looks like a spaceship, right? <laughs> Looks very, very dated by today's standards, but if you think about it too, it's very futuristic, right? Atari 400 Explained. A selection from an Atari computer catalog dating to early 1982 shows off the features of the 400. Let's zoom in on that so you can see. Now, this is one of the computers I don't have don't have the 400 or the 800, the originals. Um, I do have the 800 XL though, and the 1200 XL and other later computers. But there were different kits, like the entertainer, the programmer, and you can see those boxes on eBay, usually for sale. There's the communicator kit, the educator, the program. Allison. In this television commercial from 1981, a young entrepreneur extols the virtues of her Atari 400 computer for work and play. Let's take a look. That's business. Hey. Terrific. How do you keep track of your customers? My Atari 400 home computer. Excuse me, Dad. Why Atari? Shopped around. It's a lot of computing capability for such a low price. You <laughs> use it a lot? Sure, life's not all fun and games. There's homework, I even program. Uh-huh. Atari has lots of software, not all the others do. Mm. And of course, only Atari has games like Centipede. Game. Well, we executives have to unwind. Atari Home Computers. Only Atari puts so much in it for you. Very cool how they're trying to marry the uh, uh, kids liking video games and the home computer 
for the family, right? Very neat. So let's keep moving on here. The Atari 800. The key upgrade in the Atari 800 model was its full stroke sculptured keyboard. Although it is also included, al although it also included a second cartridge slot, output for a monitor instead of a TV, and the ability to upgrade its built-in RAM with extra memory modules sold separately. Let's take a look at this beauty. Now this is much more the keyboard I'm used to on the 800 XL. Atari 800 explained. A selection from an Atari computer catalog dating to early 1982 shows off the features of the 800. Let's take a look here a little closer. 16K bytes of RAM included, maybe expanded to in 8K or 16K increments, up to 48K RAM with user installed memory modules. Father and Son. In a television commercial from 1981, a dad explains why he bought an Atari 800 computer for his son. Let's play it. Bought a home computer, huh? An Atari 800 home computer. Nothing but the best for my son. Why Atari? Uh, Atari makes computers that, you know, seem friendly, part of the family. Want to show off? Sure. They're real easy. Terrific software, huh? Nice graphics. And how do you like this for sound capability? Impressive. It sure is. So what's his first project? Soon? The alphabet. A is for airplane. Atari home computers. Only Atari puts so much in it for you. Love those old commercials. So let's go ahead and come back up here. The first gaming PC. Former Atari engineers David Crane and Jerry Jessup and game designer Ed Fries discuss how the first Atari computers were really souped up game consoles and why everyone was just fine with that. Let's play it. I think the Atari 400-800 were really the first home computers that I felt like were designed to be in somebody's home and for an average person to, uh, to utilize. Atari, you know, made some interesting decisions over the years. I mean, they were number one in the world in making video games, but they saw home computers were coming. And Apple II was out and they said, we got to compete with Apple for, you know, computers. So it came down from on high that we were going to make a computer like the Apple II, but better in some way. But the engineering department said, hey, we're, we're video game people. Why are we doing this? <clears throat> but they were told, you will do this. So what, what actually happened was the engineers made the Atari 800 into the next best video game player. It had all the sprite capability, it had coprocessors in there, you know, the first GPU in a computer was probably in the Atari 800. Um, all of this stuff was going on in the engineering department, and yet the management thought we were making a computer. We were really just making a video game that we could make cool games on. My participation was mainly on the uh, prototype pre-production side. Um, we had this very sophisticated, allegedly sophisticated, internal interactive test system called the PIT system that we couldn't get a single unit to pass. Labor Day 1979, can you guys work uh, overtime over the weekend? We need to hand build some production units um, because we need to put them complete through the entire process. They need to be completely finished consumer product in the box. We need these for JC pennies so that they can make the holiday catalog. So we worked, um, I actually didn't leave Atari for about three days, hand building these units. <laughs> and it was like four 400s and four 800s to ship on Monday to um, JC Penney's they received them at their warehouse, they took pictures of them for the catalog, and then they immediately shipped them back to us. That was it. That's what we needed to do to get this product out. My main contribution to the Atari 800 operating system, I created a language similar to PostScript that could draw lines and, and squares and circles and vector graphics 
drawn into the bitmap of the Atari 800 and put them into the operating system so that I didn't have to put it in any of my games. So I could borrow from the operating system stuff that I'd put in there and use it when making games. So yes, we were tasked with working on the operating system, but we did it in, we did it our way. We did it in the video game method. The idea came up that maybe I could get one of these machines for Christmas. And I thought I was gonna get an Apple II because that was what I had at school and what I thought was cool. Um, but I got an Atari and it was an Atari 800 uh, with a tape cassette drive um, and um, you know, at first I was like, oh, it's not an Apple, but it, you know, it's my own computer. It's super exciting. Um, and then the more I got into it, you know, the more I realized it was so much better than the Apple. Probably piss off some Apple people, but it, you know, it was really an amazing machine. I mean, I mean, the, the graphics and sound on it were, were incredible and, um, and it was a super fun machine to program. And so that was really, that was really what got me started. Very cool. I remember playing that on my first um, look at the at this collection, um, and yeah, very neat. My first computer was a TI-994A. I wish I wanted an Apple, but I got that instead. It was a great computer still, but now I wish I had an Atari computer, <laughs> seeing all this stuff. <clears throat> so, Star Raiders, 1979. While Atari's computer marketing de-emphasized gaming in favor of more serious applications, the fact remained that the 400 and 800 were very capable gaming machines, as exemplified by the exclusive game Star Raiders, which was a massive early hit. You can play the slightly improved Atari 5200 version in this collection. So let's take a look at that since it's here. Star Raiders Atari 5200 1982 Created by Doug Neubauer, the space combat simulation Star Raiders was the first killer app for Atari 8-bit computers. The 5200 version, running on very similar hardware, but with the convenience of analog joystick and keypad controls, brought one of Atari's defining computer games to the console audience. And I do believe I played this already um, earlier. Um, not 100% sure though, so I'm going to go ahead and... Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. I remember seeing this. But just to show you this, how they have improved it a little bit. And yeah, see that you, you have these different scanners here on the screen, which are neat. The long range scan, the rear view, the galactic chart, and the forward view. So, um, yeah, just wanted to show you what this looks like here. Anyway, I did play that earlier, so let's go ahead and exit out just to see the instruction manual again, if you didn't see it last time. Operation Wipeout. Love these manuals, they're so cool. They really did put a lot of money into the 5200 manuals, they're just awesome. Here it is. You want to see it in all its glory, all 36 pages or whatever. Um, so let's go ahead and go back to the main menu. Okay. Original cover art. The original artwork used on the cover of Star Raiders for Atari 8-bit computers, signed McCormack. Beautiful. Love that. Atari's computer killer app. Game designers, or sorry, game developers Ed Freeze, Jerry Jessup, and Owen Rubin talk about why Star Raiders was the game that made people want to buy an Atari computer. Let's play it. We had access to the 800, 400, you know, pre production models for probably a good year before they ever hit the marketplace. And I would literally every weekend check out an Atari 800 and prototype Star Raiders and spend the entire weekend playing Star Raiders. It was just absolutely phenomenal. I couldn't get enough of it. One of my favorite games in the 800. I really liked Star Raiders. I still play that today. I still bring up my Atari 800 and play that occasionally. Star Raiders was the killer app. Star Raiders was 
to the 800 what Halo was to the Xbox. You know, it was it was the game. You really, pretty much everyone bought it with the system. It was the system seller. It was very well done. It had a lot of depth. Uh, it was easy. It had easy modes where you could people could get through it, and you could work up to the harder modes. And the harder modes just made things a little more difficult. They didn't penalize you for getting good at the game. So what did I do with my 800? I, and I actually did buy an Atari 800 in the company store and I paid full price for it, full employee price. Um, and I played Star Raiders because that's what you did on the Atari 800. You know, there was a lot of great stuff about, you know, storing recipes and doing this and learning things. And I, I, I did go through some of the learning things, but I played the Live in Daylights out of Star Raiders, which was, I think, probably for a couple of years, the most phenomenal game you could play outside of an arcade. I know Star Raiders definitely has a following with those that grew up with it. Um, it's a little too slow for me, but um, I do appreciate what it brought to the industry, definitely. The Atari 830. Look at this thing. Before fiber and Wi-Fi, going online with your personal computer required a slightly different procedure. The Atari 830 acoustic modem let you attach your telephone handset to your computer so you could dial up a local bulletin board and connect with the other Atari users. I was actually on a BBS, a bulletin board system or service, uh, back in 93 in Arlington, Texas. That was my first exposure to that, and it was called Argus. It was amazing. We used to have get-togethers and uh, pizza joints and get to meet these people who I only knew by their handle, and I was Sweet Pea back then and some other names. But uh, one of those was Ballistic Coffee Boy, by the way. Um, yeah, but um, very neat. Look at this thing. Looks like something on Get Smart. <laughs> Beautiful. And it looks like we've got another commercial. Mom, 1981. In this TV commercial from 1981, families discover that many of their problems can be solved with an Atari computer, but not all of them. Let's play it. Atari brings the computer age home. Okay, Ma, what's the capital of Nebraska? Oh, come on, come on, I'm trying. Atari home computers can teach you or reach you with important information anytime, day or night. I already checked the computer the uh, bears lost. Yeah, how about the lions? Oh, you owe me on that too. <laughs> and if your jump shot is a little off, we can help you there too. Hey guys, how about a deal? The car tonight for Atari basketball. Mm, nah. In fact, there's no end to your possibilities with Atari home computers. They're easy to That's use good. and afford. But best of all, they just might be the wisest investment you'll ever make. Watch this. Hey, Mom. Hmm. What's the capital of Delaware? Dover. I told you she's smart. Atari home computers. We brought the computer age home. God, that's so dated, isn't it? <laughs> Caverns of Mars. In late 1981, Atari established the Atari Program Exchange, or APX, a division that would publish and sell the best Atari computer programs submitted by users. The biggest APX hit was Caverns of Mars by Greg Christensen, a vertically scrolling shooter in which the player infiltrated a cavern, set a bomb, then escaped. Atari later released this under its own label. <clears throat> There were many other games too, like um, Space Chase, I believe, or Astro Chase. Um, yeah, great games on the APX. Uh, so let's take a look at this box here. I love how they uh, did this. Mars declares war, look at that. <laughs> it's amazing. Let's play it. Caverns of Mars, Atari 800, 1981. Greg Christensen was still a senior in high school when he created Caverns of Mars, a vertical space shooting game which proved so successful within the homebrew Atari program exchange, its biggest seller, that Atari ultimately published it as an official game cartridge in 1983. Let's, let's play it. This is a great game. I love it.
As you can see, I'm not the world's best at that game, but I'm a little rusty. And that was even on the novice um, screen. Here we go. Let's see here. Let's look at the instruction manual. Into the perilous depths, the invasion begins. I actually really like this game. I'm a lot better at it than you saw. I'm just very rusty right now. Um, yeah, I can make it to the second or third stage, I believe. Um, very fun. Can't believe a user made that. That's so cool. So let's move on here. Original cover art. The original artwork used on the cover of the Atari published version of Caverns of Mars, signed McCormack. Love that. Two families. In this TV ad comparing Atari's computers to rival brands, one family is excited about upcoming games for their Atari 800, while another family feels they may have made a big mistake. Let's take a look. These families are learning about home computers. The family with the Atari home computer is learning... Spanish, German, French, Italian. The other... No foreign languages. The Atari family is learning... Three programs teach us to program. The other... We've only one. And while the Atari family learns to play Centipede Star Raiders, and soon... E.T. The other learned... We made a mistake. Over a thousand programs featuring the world's most popular games, but sorry, only with Atari. E.T., huh? <laughs> Let's get, keep going here. 1982, Minor 2049er. This is another fun game. Another breakout hit for the 400-800 computers, Minor 2049er was a platform game created by Bill Hogue, which he published through his company Big Five Software. The recipient of Game of the Year in the 1984 Archie Awards, Minor 2049er was one of the best-selling computer games of the era. Let's take a look at this cover. I love this cover. Really cool. So let's play it. Minor 2049er, Atari 800, 1982. Minor 2049er helped establish the platform gameplay that dominated home gaming in the decade that followed. The Atari computer version used a 16K cartridge instead of the standard 8K, making it unusually exp expensive for its time. Let's play.
Kind of get the point there. Uh, very cool game. You're basically filling in the uh, ground there as you walk along and collecting the bonuses and killing peeps. Uh, yeah, really cool game. Go through this manual here. Kind of basic. Big five software and Van Nuys, I think that said. Okay, let's go ahead and quit this and keep going. It'll blow your mind. Many different Meyer 2049 or advertisements ran in video game magazines from mid-1983 all the way until late 1984. I remember seeing this in the magazines at the time, like 3 2 on Contact or whatever, which my parents had me a subscription to when I was really young. But I could never have these. Oh, it's got five images. You've got to dig deep to find a more exciting game than Meyer 2049. It was also out for the Commodore 64 and Vic 20. Stake a claim on the most exciting new game for your Atari home computer. Gold mine of pleasure. <laughs> There's all the store or the brands there, it looks like. It's out on, very cool. Scraper Caper. Although it was touted in this November 1983 two page advertisement spread. Bill Hoag's planned follow-up to Minor 2049er called Scraper Caper never actually came out. Bounty Bob would make his return in a different game called Bounty Bob Strikes Back in 1985. Well, that's a shame. To escape to the city. <laughs> okay, let's keep going here. Juggles House, 1982. One of the major selling points of personal computers to parents was the fact that a computer might help their children get a leg up on their education. Atari software like Juggles House extended that promise even to the youngest kids. Gavin thinks he's playing. An ad for Juggles' House from the fall 1983 edition of Atari Connection magazine. I used to look just like that kid back then. <laughs> Atari 1200XL. I actually own one of these and I love it. It's bigger as you can see and um, it's much more comfortable to type on. And it's got LEDs at the top there. Uh, really cool machine. Didn't last long though. In March 1983, Atari attempted to update its 8-bit computer line for the 1980s, producing the sleek metallic accent at 1200XL. The updated design concealed the fact that it was roughly identical to the 400 and 800 under the hood. The high 899 price tag made it such a non-starter that Atari took it off the market within months. It's like twice that price nowadays, I guess. Atari 600XL and 800XL owned both of these two. Atari quickly moved to replace the failed 1200XL with two cheaper, smaller models. The 600XL and 800XL were fundamentally identical to the 400 and 800, but with more RAM. But this time, the cheaper pricing, 199 or 299, combined with the updated look were a hit. The 800XL in particular was Atari's best-selling computer model of all time. You can always see these on eBay. Beautiful machine. It's going all the time. Atari got actor Alan Alda to endorse the new XL computers in his advertisement from the spring of 1984. And there are also a lot of videos he did, like commercials, for the computer line. Alan Alda was in uh, MASH, as, as many of you know. Really popular TV series and actor as well. That was in 83. Atari Soft. Atari's main advantage over its rivals in the home computer market was the vast library of well-known exclusive games. In 1983, Atari apparently decided it could make more money by simply proving, by simply providing 
those games for its competitors' machines. The Atari Soft Division was a huge hit, although it came to an end after Jack Tramiel took over. I remember seeing these cartridges in the stores, at Babbage's and whatnot, and other places. A New Era, 1984. In June 84, Jack Tramiel's company acquired the assets of the Atari Computer and Home Gaming Divisions from Warner Communications. Tramiel renamed his company Atari Corporation and set about developing a new 16-bit PC, aimed primarily at competing with his old company, Commodore. Johnny Bob Strikes Back, 85, here's another game. Bill Hogue followed up Minor 2049er with Bounty Bob Strikes Back. While the gameplay was similar to the original, the graphics now had an appealing pseudo 3D look. Love that. Also an expensive game to own in the box. Bounty Bob Strikes Back, Atari 800, 1984. The sequel to Minor 2049er retained the platform gameplay but refined the formula adding a pseudo 3D perspective to the graphics and boasting 25 levels compared to the original game's 10. Let's play this, y'all. Bob's Morning Calisthenics. <laughs> Interesting name for a level. Whoops. Hey, at least you got the jewels, right? This is a little harder game. I found um, some of the jumps to be very accurate. You have these little teleporters here. It's really hard to jump on those. Whoops. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, not the best at that either, but I really appreciate for what it is, definitely. Now, I, I do love here how you put in your name. I'll just put in BBB. I played this over the Christmas holiday and I got much higher score. <laughs> Anyway, so that's Bounty Bob Strikes Back. Let's look at the instruction manual here. Much more uh, color there. Okay, there's not a lot to that manual. Let's keep going here. Atari ST, now I have one of these two. There are several models, I have the base model. Atari introduced the Atari ST computer in the spring of 1985. Based on the 16-bit Motorola 68000 chip, it embraced the then-new concept of the Graphical User Interface, or GUI, letting users point and click on the screen with a mouse. The ST line was mostly successful in Europe, where it became a popular gaming platform. I'm always reminded of this too whenever I watch uh, This Week in Retro, the podcast that's also on YouTube. They talk a lot about the ST line. That's because it was very popular in Europe. Oh, let me through all the screens here. Yep, and you have a, a GUI, just kind of like Windows a little bit, right? They borrowed heavily, I think, from... Um, now, I'm not sure if they borrowed from Macintosh or if Macintosh borrowed from them, I'm not sure. But it's called the GEM operating system, GEM operating system. Um, and yeah, really cool. 
Atari XE. Now I have the 130 XE myself. The Tremel-led Atari Corporation also gave the APA computer lines one more upgrade, introducing the low-priced XE line. At under $200, it had the re redesigned look of the ST, but was fundamentally the same computer that dated back to the 1970s and the 400-800. Much more cleaner look in there. I have this one too, and this the XEGS was kind of competing with the Nintendo Entertainment System at the time with the light gun. Kind of interesting, right? Look at those pastel colored buttons. <laughs> I'll show you it closer. There were some great games just made for it though, and it was always it, it was also backwards compatible with a lot of the 400 800 games, so or 800 games. Now nearly 10 years old, the Atari 8-bit architecture got one more release in 1987 as the Atari XE game system. Atari released a new line of game cartridges with XCGS branding, although most of them were essentially the same games that had appeared on the computers in the Atari 5200 home system. This made it difficult for the XCGS to compete. And some, they came in a bundle as well with a light gun. There was also a tan uh, Atari 2600 looking joystick like the CX20 um, joystick. And I have one of those too. Food Fight. One game that was only released in XCGS packaging was a port of the 1983 arcade game Food Fight. Ultimately, very few XC games were released and it had a short shelf life. And this is also on the Atari 7800. Let's play it. Food Fight Atari 800 1989. A port of Atari's arcade game starring Charlie Chuck, who flings foodstuffs at a trio of aggressive chefs and vice versa. The home computer version of Food Fight was one of the only 32 games released under the Atari XE computer banner. However, its single joystick and lone action button made it a good fit for the system's controller, which was the same Atari CX40 joystick included with the Atari 2600. I meant to say CX40 if I said CX20 earlier. <laughs> uh, let's play it. This is one of my favorites. Oh, let me go back to level one or something if I can. What happened there? Okay, let's let's go there. I actually prefer the seventy hundred version. This version's th this version seems a little funky to me. In all honesty, um, the seventy hundred version seems a little more fluid. In this version, it, it's a lot slower to me. I don't know why, when this was on a computer. You can see I'm sucking here because I'm so used to the 7800 version. Um, I love that version. Whoops. <clears throat> That version's a lot harder. <laughs> okay, I just want to get through once. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I just want to get through one stage, y'all. I'm a lot better than this, I promise. The the Joy Cons make this hard to play. Um, so definitely recommend using a different controller when playing Atari 50. Um, yeah, it's just let's just go there and get the cone. <laughs> See, so yeah, I definitely prefer the 7800 version, which I believe is also on here, I think. So let's go ahead and look at the instruction manual. Black and white there. Not a lot to this. The arcade game is definitely a lot better. Original art. The original art used for the cover of home versions of Food Fight. Charlie Chuck. Love it. Jack strikes back. Having been ousted by the company he founded, Commodore, just after it launched the Commodore 64 computer, new Atari CEO Jack Tramiel was focused on defeating his former company. 
but with Atari and Commodore so focused on each other, it was Apple computers that ended up the most popular machines of the era. Atari PC By 1987, the trends were clear. The IBM-compatible forerunners of today's modern PCs were dominating the home computer market. Atari even entered the market with the Atari PC, releasing the first models in 1987. Now, I never had one of these, and these are also kind of hard to find online. So, um, yeah. But they did try to compete in that arena. Um, yeah, these are really hard to find. 1989, Atari Portfolio. I do have one of these, and they're pretty cool. Before it left the computer business, Atari had one more first, the first palm top PC, the Atari Portfolio. Compatible with the IBM standard, Portfolio let users do basic tasks like text editing and spreadsheets on a tiny device, then transferred the data to their home PC. It famously appeared in the film Terminator 2, it definitely did, whenever the dude stole money out of the ATM, the boy. <laughs> 1992 Atari Falcon Atari's final computer was the Falcon, a 32-bit machine that was only produced for a year and is today a high price collector's item. It sure is. I've seen some of these go for two or three grand. Yump. Created in 2007 by a four-person team from Poland, Yump is an action game in which a bouncing ball travels down a tube. The sophisticated graphics show how much can be done with the 1970s hardware and decades of know-how. And this is a great game I never played before. I just wish they had featured more um, Atari 8-bit games in this collection, because there are some great ones out there. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Yump, Atari 800, 2007. I actually really like this game. Tunnel Jumper is not a common genre, but the innovative indie game Yump certainly defines it. Players traverse a tubular maze, steering a ball that bounces along with the reactive soundtrack. It's a great example of modern programmers continuing to innovate on Atari home computers. Let's play it. Love this game. There was a lot about this game that reminds me of Marble Madness and other games like that. Um, basically, you're bouncing this ball through this maze. And I have to say, this this looks better on the Switch screen than it does here on the big TV screen. It's very pixelated. But, you know, you can push up to jump higher. I love the music in this game, as well as the graphics. See, I just jumped really long there. Made it. Oh, that was hard. Level two, here we go. Aspire to Yump. <laughs> oh, it does get a lot harder, as you can see. Wah. Died. Really, you do have to time your jumps perfectly here. Whoa! <laughs> That's hard. Dang! That's so tough. Definitely practice makes perfect on this game. Oh, crap. <laughs> anyway, guys, you get the idea. Let me show you the manual here, which is really cool. 2007 authors. Okay, so this was a later game. Yeah, I, 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 I really wish they had um, shown more games in this compilation for the Atari computer line, for sure, because there are so many great games out there that I love playing, um, especially on the XEGS and the ST line. Into the 90s. Ultimately, the dominance of the IBM compatible PC meant Atari's exit from the computer business in the early 90s, but it was already planning a big move back into video games. 
So when we come back, you guys, you've been warned. We're going to take a look at the 90s and beyond. So I wanted to thank you guys so much for watching and listening to uh, my Atari 50 walkthrough. My talk through, I should say, and gameplay. Um, it's a great compilation. It really does show what Atari had to offer uh, throughout the last 50 years. Um, it's fantastic. Again, I just want to emphasize there are so many great Atari 8-bit games out there. I have lots of favorites. Um, you know, all, all, all the classics you've heard of. Pac-Man is on the 800 computer and it looks very much like the arcade game, whereas the 2600 version did not. Um, it's got Battlezone on the XE as well. Um, you have a, a huge library of ST games out there on floppy. Um, and lots of carts out there for the Pointer and 800 computer line that I love. There are so many, I can't even name one. I like playing Frogger on my 800XL, on my 1200XL. I like playing uh, uh, Hubert, um, Star Raiders, there's Star Wars even. Um, so many games, thousands of games or hundreds of games. But um, anyway, let me know down below what you think, you guys, about um, the... Dawn of PCs on Atari 50. Again, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, like, comment, and go get your Java. And have you played Atari today? We'll see you next time for the next part, and we'll take a look at the 90s and beyond. Thank you, guys. Have a great one. We'll see you later. Bye.